Hello and welcome to the first workout in the series that I'm doing with Saracen Horsebeam. So I'm Lindsay from Equi Pilates and today we're going to be doing a short, it's only going to take about 10 minutes, mobility series. So you can do this maybe first thing in the morning when you get up to get going for the day or maybe just as a bit of a regroup before you go to bed or any time in between, it's entirely up to you. Now you will need a stretch band for this. Or if you haven't got a stretch band, um, maybe a bandage, like a, quite a fairly elasticated bandage, perhaps like a tail bandage, that would be good. Um, so we're going to start with your uh, feet about hip width apart, start standing. So to find that, just have your feet together and then just open your toes a little bit, just to make a small V, and then open your heels. And that will give you about the width of your hip joints. Because interestingly, they are um, a little bit further in for most, than most people think than the kind of sides of your hips. They're kind of roughly halfway between the sides of your hips and your midline. So anyway, here we are with our hip width apart. So if you take your band, the first thing we're going to do is have a little bit of a check into our um, breathing. It's always good to do this as a bit of a check-in um, to help just settle your body and mind. And breathing has a huge influence on how freely your body can move just through everyday life, but also with your horse as well. So we've got our band just um, towards the bottom of our ribcage. And you're going to cross it over. And just put a little bit of tension on it so you can feel the band, you're aware of the contact of the band uh, around your ribcage. And then we're going to start just by breathing in and out in a kind of comfortable uh, rhythm. And notice that as you breathe in, you can allow the air to move towards where the band is in contact on, in your, um, on your ribcage. So as you breathe in, you'll feel the ribs, the lower ribs, kind of moving out into the band, sort of out and up. And as you breathe out, your lower ribs will settle um, away from the band, so reducing the kind of feeling of contact or tension onto the band. So I'm going to move my elbows, so you keep on my elbows, how your lower ribs are moving. So as we breathe in, the lower ribs are kind of moving out and up a little bit. And then as you breathe out, they are settling in and down. So again, breathing in, lower ribs moving out and up, and then breathing out, lower ribs moving in and down. A bit like an umbrella opening and closing. Let's do that one more time. So breathing in, lower ribs moving out and up, and then breathing out, lower ribs moving in and down. We're taking the band a little bit lower now, so onto your waist. So just moving it down a bit and again just pull it a little bit so you've got a bit of feedback from the band and just a little bit of tension on it. We'll do the same thing again just breathing in and out but imagining that the breath is moving now towards this lower placement of your band. So breathing in, the air travelling that little bit lower and out and breathing in the air moving towards the band, almost like being a bit of a magnet, and then breathing out. So now let's try just slightly lower still. So we're going to take the band onto your pelvis or towards the kind of sides of your um, sides of your uh, pelvis, just below these kind of bony shelves here on the sides of your hip. So again, give give it a little bit of a pull so you've got some feedback from the band in this lower position. Doing exactly the same again and imagining the breath moving down even further towards the lower position of the band. Now, even though we notice that the ribs moved out and up a little bit, your diaphragm, which is your major breathing muscle, actually moves downwards in your body when we breathe in. So when you're breathing in, especially thinking about this lower position, your diaphragm is moving down, and then when we breathe out, it's moving up again in your, um, in your body. So breathing in, diaphragm is moving down, and then breathing out, diaphragm is moving up again. So just do that a couple more times, feeling the 
air kind of moving down, filling those lower places in your body. And then last time. Okay, good, right. Still using your band. Hopefully it'll be long enough to do this. We're actually gonna wrap it. You can just do it once if you want to, but mine's long enough to do this twice. I'm gonna wrap it round, again, my lower ribs, which is kind of where I started, and just tie it. So you will feel that this is, uh, uh, you know, actually restricts the movement that we've just talked about a little bit, but that's all good, that's part of the plan. <clears throat> so just again, with that little bit of tension of the band around here, we're going to actually start to move the upper body and the rib cage, a little bit of a mo uh, mobiliser. The idea of this is you're going to keep your lower body quite still. So I'm now going to see if I can take my upper body around in a circle, but keeping the pelvis downwards fairly still. And as you do this, just notice how does this movement feel for a start? Does it feel fairly easy or does it feel challenging? And um, as, it, as your upper body moves, just notice that that actually changes the weight distribution in your feet. So you might feel that the, the uh, weight through your feet is actually moving around in a bit of a circle as well. That's quite interesting because if your rib cage and how it moves changes the weight placement and the concentration of your weight through your feet when you're standing, then change direction, then you can notice that the same sort of thing would happen through your seat when you're in the saddle. So we can actually, by mistake, end up giving weight signals through our seat bones uh, when we're riding because our ribs are moving. So just being aware of actually where your rib cage feels comfortable, where it feels kind of maybe more uh, familiar and where it feels a little bit strange to move it to can give you a bit of an idea, I'll just let myself settle, about maybe your patterns and the positions your body likes to adopt in the saddle. So we're going to just take that away now and do the band. And just notice, take a few breaths. Oh, that feels much freer now. <laughs> Giving the rib cage a little bit of a challenge there with a little bit of uh, compression from my band helps to then help things feel a lot freer. So we're going to go on to the next exercise, which is going to be moving down to the mat. So I'm just going to pop my, uh, my band on the floor, so we'll need that again in a second. I'm going to move to the end of the mat. And again, we'll start with the feet about hip width apart and uh, just weight even through both feet. And just take a moment to breathe in to prepare. And then as you breathe out, we're just going to curl the chin just towards the collarbones. And then with your knees quite soft and your arms quite soft. We're just going to allow each bone of the spine just to cascade forward and down, just to a point that feels comfortable for you. Make sure you're breathing, knees are soft, arms are soft, and then when you reach a comfortable point, we will um, take another breath in, and then as you breathe out, we're just going to re-sack the spine, bone by bone by bone, back up to where you started. We're going to do exactly the same again, but this time we're actually going to move down to the mat, so I'll show you how to do that. So same again, breathing in to prepare, and then as you breathe out, we will allow the chin to move towards the collarbones, and then with soft arms and soft knees, rolling down bone by bone, and then bend your knees if you need to, to take your fingers down onto the mat. And then we're going to walk the hands out. Hold a little brief plank position. Knees are going to go down one at a time. And then we're just going to come into a kneeling position so that we can come back down onto the mat. 
So you might want a, a block for your head or a cushion, uh, that's fine. I'm just going to use a block as well. So we're going to roll back onto the mat. I don't need all of those cushions, but I'll just use a little block. Okay, and then again, we're just going to have the um, feet hips apart, so you can bring the feet together, toes apart, heels apart. Here we are, ready to go. So if you want to just take your band again, I think what we'll do is we'll just double it up so you've got kind of a shorter but potentially more resistant uh, distance with it. We're going to take your left leg up into what's called a tabletop position. So that's just bringing the knee up just above the hip. We're going to pop the band around the back of your thigh and you can just now let your lower leg just soften a little bit. So your knee is directly above your hip. Elbows are going to stay on the floor and you're going to hold the band securely with both hands. If you want to, you can hold it as if you're holding the reins. Now, keeping your pelvis connected on both sides to the mat as evenly as you can. We're going to make sure we're breathing and then start to create some small circles with your knee. So this is a nice little exercise because using the support of the band, it's almost as though somebody else is kind of doing the exercise for you and you can allow the thigh bone to just sink into your pelvis a little bit. And as we create these circles, I'd like you to imagine that your hip joint is filled with something really yummy like olive oil or chocolate, perhaps melted chocolate. And that it's helping the movement of the hip to feel really fluid and lubricated. So we'll just have a little change of direction. Again, finding that sense that the thigh bone can just sink into the hip socket. And that the movement is becoming freer actually, freer and more flowing with every circle that you create. just going to take a pause, release the band, pop the foot back onto the floor and then you might want to just slide your leg out and then slide the other one out as well and just notice how that feels on the side that you've done compared to the other side. You might notice a difference. I notice a difference. My left leg feels a bit longer than the other one now. Okay so we'll just slide that back in again followed by the other one. And then we'll float the right leg up, pop the band behind, elbows on the floor. And then again, letting that kind of lower leg just soften a bit, you can start to draw your circles with your knee. And as you do this, again, allow the pelvis to stay evenly connected onto the floor at the back, so it's even on both sides. And notice that you can allow the thigh bone, the femur, to just sink into the pelvis as you circle. And feeling that again, your hip joint is filled with something yummy, maybe a little bit oily, maybe a little bit slippery, just allowing the top of the thigh bone to circle and stir inside the hip joint. Let's change direction. It's almost stirring around inside your hip joint and your pelvis. Making sure you're breathing. Okay, we'll just do one more. And then just releasing that floating down, 
And again, you might want to slide that out, followed by the other one. Again, just notice how your legs feel one compared to the other. And then we're going to slide them back in again. And you might want to use a little cushion for this, a folded up cushion just between your knees. I would use a, um, a Pilates overball for this normally, but if you don't have one of those, you can absolutely just use a small folded cushion. I'm just going to move my head block as well. So arms just down by your sides with the shoulders kind of down away from your ears. So you're almost reaching your fingertips towards your toes a little bit. We're just going to start to rock the pelvis gently back and forth. So using your lower abdominals really to do this. So you want your bottom to feel quite soft at the moment. Now if you were lying on a big clock face with 12 up by your nose and 6 down by your toes, you'd be rocking the pelvis between number 12 and number 6. And if that feels fairly comfortable, you can then develop that a little bit. So once we've used the lower abdominals to roll the pelvis back, so the lower back becomes flat into the floor, you can start to peel the spine up into a bridge position. So you're creating this kind of ski slope. And then come down through the spine, bone by bone until you come back to where you came from. Keep your feet as even on the floor as you can. I'm going to do that again. And you might want to roll the spine up on an out breath. And then breathe in at the top. And breathe out to come back down again. And we're thinking about moving each bone of the spine individually if possible, so one at a time. So we'll just do that one more time. So rolling the pelvis back towards number 12. And then pressing the feet into the mat a little bit, evenly, all the way up to our ski slope position. Hips nice and high, hips level. And then imagine that your breastbone is like a cake that is sinking in the middle. Allow the breastbone to just sink towards the mat and then allow each of the other vertebrae to follow suit till we come back down. We'll just do that one last time. So rolling the pelvis, peeling the spine up into our bridge and then allowing the chest the breastbone to just sink towards the floor, each bone following suit back to where we came from. And then you can just take that away before using a pad. And then we're going to prepare to just come back up into standing. So from this position on the mat, we're just going to roll over onto your side and then press up into an all fours position. Curl your toes underneath you, and then we're going to just walk your hands back towards your knees, rock into a little bunny hop position, and then hands back towards feet again. Look at a spot just between your toes, and then we're going to take the bottom up into the air, bend your knees if it's more comfortable for you, and then we're going to roll up bone by bone back into our upright position. Now just to finish off with, if you take your band, feet are going to be hip width apart again. We're going to hold the band just with a little bit of slack in it, just either side of your thighs. And then we're going to make sure we're just breathing and then keep the shoulder top settled down away from the ears. Just bring the bands up to shoulder height and then down again. Same again. And then I'd like you to imagine as we do this that your chest is a pair of headlights. And see if you can keep the beam of your headlights shining 
straight forward. So it's not going to move up and down as we move the arm. So head like staying fairly steady. We're going to take the band a little bit further up now towards the ceiling and then down again. Again, keeping your head like being steady. So this time we're going to explore that a little bit further, if that feels okay for you. We're going to take the arms up and over. Now the beauty of using the band for this, or your elastic tail bandage, is that because we've got this little bit of give, if your shoulders could do with a little bit of help in terms of mobility, and I think mine do, I've been doing loads of poo picking today, and so I'm feeling like this is a useful thing to do. So as we go up, then we can just take the arms that little bit wider with the band and the elasticity allows for that. So just keep moving through, make sure you're breathing and just notice how the shoulder blades move on your rib cage. So they'll move up. And then down again, and they'll move up and around, forward, and then down, they can settle back. So just notice that, how the shoulder blades are moving, and then we'll do one more. Now you'll probably find that as you progress a little bit, if you want to revisit this exercise, that um, as time goes by, you'll feel that you can move through that range with perhaps less stretch on the band. But uh, in the meantime, that's quite a useful way to explore the range and explore opening up a little bit through the chest and the shoulders with a little bit of feedback from your friendly band. So I hope you've enjoyed that and um, let me know. Let me know how you go on and I'll see you again next week. Bye.